there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia Catastrophe and I'm here to give you another unhaul. I do these fairly regularly, I like to keep my shelves fluid and in flux with the books that are on the shelves and so I've got a pile here of books that I'm going to be letting go of but without further ado let's get down to the books that are leaving my shelves. So as always now I'm going to be starting with my DNFs and surprisingly there's quite a few on this list. I was going through a time where I just was fed up with books not giving me what I wanted from them and if they weren't I was letting go of them. So the first one I have here is Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen and this is just a case of it promised me something different in the synopsis than what I really got. I read this because I wanted Black Mermaids. That's what I wanted. Black mermaids, black sirens, it's all I needed from the story. However, the main character is in mermaid form for like 20 pages and then she changes into a human and I read a third of this book and she had been a human the whole of that third. It was 20 pages of mermaid and that was it. And I did not read further enough to know that if maybe halfway through the book she switches into a mermaid again or maybe just at the end she switches back into a mermaid. But she spent most of this book not being a mermaid and I came here for a mermaid story and that was not what I was getting so I was done. I signed up for something entirely different than what I was reading. I believe if you're looking for a young adult kind of mythology fantasy book then maybe you will enjoy this more. I was so 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 gutted. This is this was painful for me to DNF because I was so excited for it but that's Nineteen Claws and a Black Bird by Augustina Bastrecker, the author of Tender is the Flesh. When I read Tender is the Flesh last year it became one of my favourite books of the year. I loved it. I've recommended it to several people who've also loved it and it was such a good book for me that I was really excited for whatever came out translated from her next. However this short story collection just reiterates me the fact that because you can write a great novel does not mean you can necessarily write a great short story. I read half of this collection. I gave her so many chances but not a single one of these short stories stood out. They all felt the same. They all kind of reached the same kind of ending and went on the same kind of trajectory. Nothing was unique. Nothing spoke to me about these short stories and I was reading them and I was just feeling empty. Like no vibes, no emotions whatsoever. I was not horrified. I was not sad. Nothing. Nothing but reading words. And so even though it's a short collection at under 200 pages, I tapped out. I just said if I'm not enjoying it, I shouldn't be giving it time. I tried my best and I read half of The Cat Who Saved Books by Susuke Natsukawa. I really, really did not get along with this book. I struggled with the concept of the cat saving books and the boy that went along to save books with him because they saved books in situations where I didn't think books needed to be saved. I am someone who loves having a lot of books. Have I read all of my books? No. Do I think my unread books need to be saved from me? No. If someone wants to buy lots of books and not read them, that's fine. Their money is still supporting the author, their money is still supporting the publisher and giving those companies and those people money so that they can continue to write books and continue to publish books that other people will read. There's nothing wrong with people buying books and not reading them in my opinion and so this kind of promoting the fact that it's bad if people buy books and not read them and they need to be saved from those kind of people really rubbed me up the wrong way. It felt like bookish elitism and I don't like that. I don't like spreading how people need to handle their books. Let people handle their books however they want to handle them. Arrange them however they want to arrange them. Once they, once they own them, that's their book. Stop making it your business. So that bothered me quite a lot but also our main character was someone who was, um, mm, I forgot the word that he used which is a word that is Japanese but he was kind of like a loner who had no emotions and was like a hermit and I wasn't getting much from him. The cat, oh my gosh the cat was so mean, the cat was so mean and he didn't seem to be getting nicer the more journeys that they went on to save books together which is what I wanted like I would have liked to see the cat become nicer over the course of the book but it wasn't happening. He just felt like a spiteful cat He was saving books from situations that I didn't think they needed to be saved from and I didn't really like the main character so I DNF'd it. I was like pushing through it because again it's a short book and if it's shorter I'm more likely to push through it but I said why? Why am I doing this to myself? I'm making myself get into a reading slump and we can't have 
that. So I DNF'd it. Around the same time, I picked up, these were all books I read at the same time. Do you know how sad it was DNFing book after book for like a whole week straight? I read half, again, I've been reading so much of these books, trying to push and give them chances. I read half of The Exhibitionist by Charlotte Mendelssohn, but it was not, it was not working for me. It was about this family and one of them has an exhibition going on and they're trying to make it as good as possible for him. But he's actually married to another artist who is actually more famous and successful than him and he can't handle it. Everybody was so mean, the whole family. Everybody was mean, everybody was unlikable. I, me, a nice person, if I do say so myself, cannot deal with mean, unlikable characters. I just, I need there to be one saving grace, okay? Just one character that is nice that I can support. None of them. All of them were mean, all of them were selfish, all of them were wrapped up in themselves. The only one I cared about was the wife, who was actually the better known artist, and she was having a relationship with another woman discreetly and she was traumatized by an experience from an illness she had I believe it was breast cancer but the way I've never actually seen breast cancer written in such a traumatizing and blatantly honest way I appreciate that it kind of shows some of the the, the trauma that people can have around that experience but it was just the husband the husband. I could not deal with the way that he treated anyone and the fact that nobody was calling him out on it and were just letting him behave like a grown man child infuriated me to no degree. I couldn't stand it so I DNF'd it. I was during that point of just DNFing things. I just couldn't with Ghosts by Dolly Alderton. I just couldn't. I didn't care. I didn't care about this woman and her like really millennial problems. I didn't care. It was just she was annoying. I just didn't care about her. And she was the main character. I didn't even read that much, to be honest. I didn't read that much. I read a few chapters. <laughs> just couldn't stand it. Couldn't stand her tone of voice. Couldn't stand the way she was talking. So I just was like, nope, nope, not doing it. Sparrow by James Hines. I, I need to, to remember sometimes my genre and stay in my lane. Stay in my lane. Because I do read a bit of everything. But this kind of historical fiction, it, it was too long, okay? It was too big. It's a big book. The font was really small. And there's no chapter breaks no chapters it was painful it was painful reading this without chapters i read about 100 pages and the the story was moving so slowly it was set during the like roman empire time towards the end of it he's a slave he's growing up in a brothel and it's just about his journey i read a good i think like 100 to 200 pages of it and the story was still moving so slowly he was still so young he was growing up and things were happening and he was starting to get an understanding of the world but i just was not i wasn't there with him i wasn't sunk into this historical fiction world and it was just moving too slowly for me and i had to tap out okay some of you historical fiction readers are braver than me I love a good young adult contemporary, but I DNF'd everything within and in between. I read a third of it, so I read a good way in, but our main character was so annoying because she was, she had a best friend who was just really mean and a bit discriminatory, and she just never noticed that her best friend was horrible to everyone and didn't wonder why they had no other friends but each other. And it really bothered me because she had this realization that her best friend was horrible and started being horrible to ex best to her best friend without much prompting it was like what has changed to make you have this sudden realization that your friend is horrible not much and she herself was really wrapped up in herself and didn't didn't really communicate or change things she seemed to be making the same mistake with this new group of friends that she fell into as she did with her old best friend and I was just frustrated at how she was also turning up her nose at people who had looked after her for so long like yes you don't understand why your grandmother has kept secrets from you but that doesn't mean that every single nice thing your grandmother has ever done while raising you is in, is not valid anymore you can't just retract or love for your grandmother and I think maybe I'm being a bit over dramatic and saying it in that way but she seemed really ungrateful and a bit mean and not like someone I wanted to follow a whole book with and she annoyed me to no end so I just was like I'm not gonna read about this annoying character and then last but not least on my DNFs we have the memory index by Julian R Bakker this is set in a world where memories are currency and it's a bit dystopian but I didn't know that when I when I got this book. I thought this was gonna be a young adult sci-fi book and there is a difference between young adult sci-fi and young adult dystopian, okay? I know that dystopian is a sub-branch of sci-fi. I know that fact, 
but please just say it's a young adult dystopian. Stop giving me sci-fi concepts and ignoring the fact that it's about the government and uh, kind of a bit of apocalyptic dystopian vibes. Just, just say it, just say it, because I know that I'm not connecting with young adult dystopian. I know that that is not what I need. I need young adult hard sci-fi. I need like young adult Afrofuturism. I need like young adult fantasy sci-fi. I need science fiction in a young adult form such as Slay by Brittany Morris, such as An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for Hunger Games but with a slightly different, a bit more edging into the sci-fi concept leading over it. And it just bothers me that it's getting labelled like young adult dystopian is kind of being buried under young adult sci-fi as people are trying to push young adult dystopians once again but to sci-fi readers. It's just, just stop it, it's not gonna work, we're gonna buy the book, we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna realise we don't like it and then give it a bad review. So just say what it is instead of trying to bury it. And so as soon as I kind of clocked it was a dystopian my, my brain switched off and I didn't understand why I wasn't connecting to the book and then I was like why is it about government conspiracy? Again, I don't need government conspiracy. Let me focus on people. I don't care about the politics and the leaders and whatever. I really like the concept of memories and them being used as currency and all of that world building, but that was not the focus. It was not about the science fiction elements of the world. It was about the government and what they were planning to use the memories thing for. So those are all my DNFs and now I'm going to move into books that I've read but decided I'm not going to keep. One of those being The Trees Grew Because I Bled There by Eric LaRocca. This is a short story collection of horror short stories. I read this one and I felt very mediocre about it. There was only one short story in this that particularly stood out to me and I particularly liked and so I know that my friend who has also read Eric LaRocca before has been following them on Twitter ever since is actually really keen to read this and asked if they could borrow it after me but I've just decided they can keep it because it's not one that I want to hold on to. I'm unhauling Autobiography by Christina Lauren and if you follow my channel you might be like oh, why are you unhauling this book that you really really liked? So this was kindly sent to me by Emily from Novel Novels from her unhaul and she got it in a charity shop so it is a bit worn down, it's like not in perfect condition, the spine is a little bit off and it also is bigger than your average paperback. So it's one of those kind of like export copies. So I really, really enjoyed this book and I want to add it to like the Christina Lauren section of my shelves, which will only have two books on it read, but I'm hoping we'll have many more in the future. And so I want to buy it in the correct paperback format in a nice shiny brand new copy. So I'm letting it leave my shelves and I'm gonna get myself a nice new copy because I didn't actually spend any money in getting this one because Emily sent it to me. So thank you, Emily, for giving me the chance to read it and finding out that I love it. And now I can't wait to get myself a shiny new copy sometime. I'm also unhauling two graphic novels that I read in July for two different reasons. One of them is Firebird by Sunmi and the other one is The Faint of Heart by Carolyn Wilson. So Firebird was just an early review copy that was sent way too early. The artwork wasn't finished and I don't really know what I want to do with this book when I unhaul it because I don't think too many people are going to take value from reading such an unfinished review copy book. So that's why I'm not keeping this one. And this one I really liked the concept and how it was about this world where people had removed their hearts and the consequences of that and one person had chosen to keep it and was trying to do something about the fact that maybe people should have their hearts back but it didn't stick the landing it just rushed and rushed and rushed to get to an ending so the end kind of didn't make any sense in the concept of this world and the story and the parameters that the author had previously set out for themselves and so it was a nice time but not a long time. And then there's this classic that I read while I was in Prague on holiday and unfortunately I really didn't like it. I struggled with how male gazy this was, I struggled with how much infidelity and cheating there was in this and those two things were enough to make me strongly strongly dislike this book. I liked learning about the Prague history and I liked seeing some of the philosophic discussions that the author included but all in all male gaziness it's a no from me. I only have four books on my shelves that I've decided will be leaving even though I haven't read them. So I'll just whiz through these quickly. The first one is King of Scars by Lee Bardugo which I bought in a stunning hardback edition naively as a very young teenager before I even had read or owned a copy of Six of Crows. I have no idea why my university self decided to do that but I've since kind of understood that Lee Bardugo's books the new ones don't sound like they're for me. I love Six of Crows, that was fantastic, and I grew up reading the Shadow and the Bone series. And I will always keep those books because I had a, well, I won't always keep them, who knows, but I have a strong sense of like 
love for them and so even though that King of Scars is set in the same universe I don't actually have that strong ties to Nikolai and some of the characters that I know repeat in King of Scars and I just don't have any interest in reading much more Leigh Bardugo in my life. I'm going to read Crooked Kingdom but after that I don't think I'm going to continue on with King of Scars. I've also heard really middling things about this series and especially about Rule of Wolves which ends up the duology that this is a series to. So I'm going to just let this one go. I'm also letting go of When God is a Rabbit by Sarah Winman. I looked up reviews for this and from people who often I align with nobody liked it. Like nobody liked it. So I'm going to just let it go. I do want to read some Sarah Winman. I've got two other books by Sarah Winman on my shelves and I will try those ones first. I'm also unhauling Desert Flower by Warish Deirdre. This is a non-fiction memoir and I know that it deals a lot with FGM. If you want to know what FGM is, I'm going to have it in the description box down below. It deals a lot with that, which is really, really intense. And I've recently read two books that are fiction that deal with it. And it's just made me realize that that's actually something that's really, really hard for me to, to read about. And it's a memoir. So this is real life for her. And I, I think I'm going to emotionally struggle with it. There's there's few things that I really know that I emotionally struggle to read about. And I've discovered that there are two that I really can't take emotionally. Like there's, there's something that I don't love reading about that's cheating, but I can read about cheating. Like it's not the end of the world. There's two things that if I can avoid it, I will avoid it. And so even this is one of the oldest books on my TBR and I didn't get to it and I didn't get to it. And I always thought I would, but... I now know that I probably won't. And then the last thing that I'm unhauling is My Heart Goes Bang by Kara Stainton. I got this based on a recommendation from someone on Booktube and I, I'm, I'm just not gonna get around to it. It's been on my shelves for a while now and it's never one that's a priority. And when I was looking through my shelves, I thought I'm gonna read literally every book on my shelf before I get to this one. And I'll always have new books coming in. So when will I really get to it? And while it does seem like something I'm looking for, I do want to read more contemporary books set during that university stage. The reviews for this were just okay across the board in, on Goodreads. So I don't think it's gonna be a priority. So I'm gonna let this one go too. And there you have it, those are all of the books that I'm unhauling and letting go of on my shelves for the time being. I do unhauls fairly regularly, so stick around if you'd like to see some more of them. I also do hauls fairly regularly. But yes, let me know in the comment section down below, what was the last book to leave your shelves because you decided it was time to unhaul it? Or what was the last book you read that you did not enjoy? Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more, and don't forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video, and you know what they say always and upwards. Excelsior!